Amen. We come on board and uh, hear what Yahweh has for us this night. We come on board. As you come on board, share the podcast. Let us uh, reach out to other people and uh, bring them on board by the masses of God. Let us bring other people on board by the grace of God and share the counsel of God together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Zikando robo sharalala zikando robo sia nasta eliku abudi. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Jehovah is awesome. He is worthy to be glorified. He deserves all the worship, all the honor and adoration. Him alone is worthy. Him alone is worthy. In the name of Jesus. As you come on board, kindly share the broadcast. Let us reach out to as many other people as we can bring other people on board. Kaidre, don't just come alone. Uh, reach out to somebody else. Bring them on board. Let us uh, be able to hear what the Lord is saying to us this night. It is night in my continent. Bring somebody on board in the house of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God is indeed amazing. And we are very happy that he has given us an opportunity to be able to minister to us this particular night. We cannot take it for granted. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That is exactly what I'm busy doing. I'm bringing other setups on board. So bring somebody uh, on board along with you. Let us bring others on board. Let us bring others on board in the name of Jesus. That is what I'm doing here. Today is our ninth, I mean our eighth day. Yeah, it is our eighth day. And the Lord has given us the strength to go all the way by his masses, which we cannot brag about. It is all about him. We cannot brag about this. It is all about him. And so we really appreciate him for his goodness and mercy in the name of Jesus. God is indeed amazing. God is indeed amazing. Hallelujah. Come on board. Let us uh, sail together by the mercies of God. Bring somebody along with you uh, so that we can uh, kick off together by the grace of God. That is exactly what I'm doing where I'm seated. We are in our H, our number eight tonight. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh. You are worthy, my Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, my Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, my Lord. You are worthy. You. You are worthy, my Lord. 
You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all adoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare our everlasting love for you. Hey, oh Father, I personally declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love for you. Hey, you mean everything to my life, Lord. You are all what I need, Jesus. You are the King of Kings, Lord. The great I am is your name. The hope of eternity is your kingdom. Hallelujah, Lord. I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you, oh Lord. Every breath I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have you away in me. Lord, I give you my heart, and I give you my soul, and I live for you, oh Lord. Every breath I take, Every moment I'm away, Lord, have you away in me. Hallelujah. We are very, very grateful that the Lord has given us an opportunity to know him. We are a part of the kingdom that is of our God. Hallelujah. We have been adopted. The Bible says that we have become heirs together with our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Everything that is of our father belongs to us. We are heirs of all what is our father's. Hallelujah. And so we are very, very grateful that this night the Lord has given us yet another opportunity to be associated with him my god hallelujah what an awesome god do we serve what a mighty god do we serve the angels are bowing before him heaven and earth is also bowing my god hallelujah the 24 elders before him the, the four creatures and the angels encamping allowed him they are all bowing in heaven and what they are saying is just to declare you are holy lord you are holy in the name of jesus what a awesome father we have in the name of jesus it's such another great moment that the lord has brought me you away wherever you're watching me from the lord has sent this voice you away and god is preparing us we are many i know you are also a voice in your own capacity god is preparing 
preparing an army for himself. He's preparing a generation of those who fear him so that he may be glorified. You know, on the face of the earth, we are the people. We are the carriers of the end time revival. We are the carriers of the end. Actually, I hear the Lord say, we are the custodian of his end time glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, let us count ourselves, I know, and let us count ourselves, you know, privileged in before the presence of the Lord. Because let me tell you that the, the kind of a life and the kind of a generation that God has brought us into, our fathers of faith died hoping and waiting. This is where, I mean, this is a kind of a moment Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob desired to see, you know, the kind of a life we have, the kind of an encounter we have with the Lord. This is what they hope i mean they died hoping and waiting for hallelujah but we are of that generation that is gone not only to uh, to see it but we are also going to enjoy the faithfulness of god in the mighty name of jesus so my prayer for each one of us even as i minister to you my god i'm a part of the church is that the lord is going to quicken our bodies to quicken our minds our spirits and our souls that we may remain in tune with the word the Lord is accomplishing in this hour in the name of Jesus. I come to us live on behalf of the JPG Fraternity and the JPGM Media. Hallelujah. Coming to you live from the capital city of Nairobi in the office by the grace of God. God is so amazing and we are very, very excited by what the Lord is accomplishing in the city of Nairobi. I, I, I did that a word as led by the Spirit of God earlier. You must have seen it. I did it where I'm seated. And I spoke to our young people. Kindly, when you come across that word, share with the youth you have in your ministry. Share with the, uh, the young people, the young generation. Let us speak out. Let us tell our young generation. The Bible says in Psalm 145 and verse 4, one generation will declare the works of God to the other generation, one, one generation to another. So we are doing that. We are not just going to watch and see as our young people are perishing in drug and Addiction, you know, sacred societies and covenanted their lives to the kingdom of darkness. We are going to speak out and tell them after this life, after you have been taken to the grave alone, they you know there is another life. There is judgment. My God, there is judgment. Hallelujah. So let us speak out, even in our own church setups. Let us tell the youth. Let us speak to them. I know I am a mother of youth. I have been there when you are telling these people. They cannot understand the language that how can you make it without a boyfriend, you know. And when you dump this, when you don't agree with this, you go to the other one and that. Because it's, you know, that vacuum, you know, it, it's the order of the day. You know, a boy cannot live without a girl. A girl cannot live without a girl. And I, I'm looking at where we are coming from. Some of us, when we were growing up, that thing, we did not even know those kind of things. My God, you know, the kind of setups we were, we were brought up in. And we were brought up in the fear of God. And we really celebrate our parents. My God, our parents were tough. My God, our parents were tough. Our mothers were tough. Oh my God, hallelujah. So we cannot relent in this generation. We must maintain that integrity. As parents, we must maintain that integrity. I've been there not once, not twice, not, not once, not twice. My children have told me, Mama, you have rocked us up very much. Mama, I don't know. You are very you, you, are, you are very tough. Mama, you are very you, 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 you are very you know you are very strict. Mama, you are I, I've been there. So I, I, there's nothing I've not had. Hallelujah. But today we don't talk about those things because now they, they, they see the sense. Actually now you know it, it has just fitted in for them by the grace of god even the youths i have in my ministry you know you tell them the truth you speak to them the truth we speak to them the truth uh before i came on board you know as i was just meditating where i'm sitting the spirit of god was telling me you know we don't condemn them if you have a youth out there if you have a, a son or a, or, a, or a daughter you know you know who is in that generation you know in that age kindly don't condemn them let us win them in love let us show them love. Let us uh, let, let us reach out to them in love. Even if you know they are they are, they are like how. I don't know how messed up they are. Let us win them in love. Let us tell them, you know, about the kingdom of God in love. Let us, let us, uh, you know, discipline them in love. That does not mean we are not going to be tough. We shall be tough because the Bible has allowed us not even to, <laughs> not, you know, to train them and to discipline them. We, you know, it is allowed in the word of God. So let us do what we are supposed to do. But one thing there is, my, my brethren, is that as parents of this generation, we cannot be silent in the name of Jesus. So we are talking about 
uh, I come on board. This is our day number nine, and we are talking about we are talking about the season of the refined. The season of the refined. Happy to see all of you. I can see all of you. We are talking about the season of the refined. And when the Lord is speaking to us about the refined, these are people who are called by His name whom he has taken through his own process of making. And I want each one of us to know that the process of my making, it is not your process of making. Because why? Whatever God has called me to become, you know, according to his preordained or predetermined purpose, is very unique. That's why the Bible says, apart from being a holy nation, a loyal priesthood, we are also a peculiar people. And this peculiar part of it, it is, you know, it is being reflected or manifested in each one of us in Individually, what God has called you to become is not what God has called me to become. We look at the, the word of God, look at the story of Joseph. He was not on, I mean, he was not the only son in, in, the, in the house of Jacob. He was not the only son or the only child in that family. But can you see the unique process of his making? Because why? God was preparing him to become that which he preordained. By the way, as Joseph, you know, was going through whatever he was going through, nobody had ever prophesied to him. He maybe he, he, by the way, if you look at um, what is going around in his life, he seemed also not to be aware. The spirit of God had not opened his eyes to know, you know, that he's going to become the prime minister in a foreign country. So there was no prayer preparation about the same. But when the season of God has come, God is making all things beautiful and bringing it to pass as He preordained for the destiny of Joseph. This is what we are seeing with the people. I mean, like Esther. You know, nobody prepared Esther. Esther is just finding herself, you know, under the custody or the care of Mordecai. And I've always said, this is a man and this is a girl. She, 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 she's an orphan girl. I, I've always asked myself, were there no other relatives, like women, like aunts, you know, where Esther would have gone to stay? But she, she's, you know, we find her, I mean, we find her in the, in the, in the, in the custody or in the care of, of Mordecai, a man. Hallelujah. And what do we see? Her being there, you know, it, it was orchestrated of God. It was in the pipeline of the purpose of God for her life. Hallelujah. And uh, when, when you look at people like, uh, uh, you know, people like Gideon, people like Nehemiah, any other person that was used by God, everything they went through and whatever, uh, you know, the season found them, it was in the pipeline of the purpose of God for them. And this is why I say, you know, Joseph being sold to the Ishmaelite that were going to Egypt, it was a free transport from the house of Jacob to where his destiny was connected. And this is what we are saying. In this season of the preordain, this season of the preordination of God, the, the, the predetermination of God, we must be very alert in our spirits. Every connection, particularly from the month of February this year, you know, I, I told us the month of February became a prophetic introductory door. And, and what you have realized in the month of February, if you check it out in your life, is that God has opened your eyes to see some things you never you had never seen before even concerning the people around you you know god has opened your eyes you know and your ears to be able to get hold of a you know of, 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 of whatever is supposed to be going with you the next level and whatever is supposed to be cut off without any strain or stress God has really been working, you know, uh, with us in this particular area. Because where, where, where now God is taking us is a very new chapter altogether. Let me tell you, we have been talking about this from the from 21st of May, year 2023, when God said he has taken us, you know, uh, or he had created for us a platform that is about the appointment with our destiny. So it, uh, it is about now, we are still in that chapter. I mean, we are still in that book. It's a big book. We are still we are still in it. So anything that is not uh, to take us to our destiny, God is clearing that. He's pruning that. He's cutting it off. He's separating. So many things have happened from last year until now. And if you look, look back in your life for the past four years, the kind of separation that the Lord has brought your way, the kind of relocation and and uh, and all that, what God has done in your life, it is so so amazing. And let me surprise you. I don't know about you, but if you check in your life, anything that was not supposed to be in your life or anything and any place or anybody any job any career that was not attached to the destiny that god has for you in the past four years god has really been removing us from those places and initially before we knew this we thought it was the devil ah uh -uh, it is not the devil hallelujah it is god who has been refining us it is god who has been purging us it is god who has been purifying us hallelujah some of the meetings and the fellowships you are used to some 
some of these places, God, and even family meetings, God would not have given you even the fear to go there. And, and you thought it was the devil that did not want you to attain. God has been working behind the scene. No, hallelujah. This is what we are seeing. What is happening about Joseph? It's God working behind the scene so that he can become the preordain of God and not only in any other place, but in the land that God preordained for that in the name of Jesus. So I want us to begin seeing God in all whatever we have gone through. Oh my God, I want us to begin seeing God. Hallelujah. You know, the spoke God has reminded me something today about the story of Job. In the book of Job chapter 42, the Bible says, and God restored the job. Hallelujah. If there was a restoration after what job you have gone through, which is a route of God. You know, the loss of children, it was a route of God. The loss of the, the flock and everything, and even the servants, even my God, it was an all allowed by God. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, when God was through with the job, hallelujah, when God was through, you know, God is even uh, you know, taking job through the process of dealing with his own friends and, and knowing the character, knowing who they are. My God, because let me tell you, it is in a season of trial in your life and testing when you know who your friends are really are. Hallelujah. So God is working. By the way, God is not even working on the friends. God is not even working on the wife of Job. My God, God is dealing with the man called Job. And that's why the Bible says it's not the wife that was restored. It's not the friends that were restored. And it's not even the family members. But the Bible says, and God restored Job in the book of Job chapter 42. Hallelujah. Because why? The whole process was from the beginning. It was about Job. Hallelujah. So the Lord may have touched the wife here, may have touched the neighbors here, and the relatives here. It may not have gotten very well to the grandparents or the children that, that, that died. But let me tell you, at the end of the day, it is about Job. So whatever we have gone through and wherever we are coming from, kindly let us begin seeing God and let us know that God is fully involved. Because why? We are sons of God. We are not sons of the devil. The energy, as long as you are living right and you are working right with God, anything that God allows to come your way, it is for our good. The Bible says that in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, and we know, Paul is saying, and we know it is not against work. All things, my God, hallelujah. Even when you have not been able to handle one, two, three things, financially, all things, hallelujah. You know, eh, 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 hallelujah, because we are the sons of God and he is our father. Hallelujah. Even when you have not been able to continue with one, two, three things, you know, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. I, I told you I wanted to go to university many years ago, and, and I didn't pass very well in Form 4. My God, hallelujah, those who know Form 4. And, and uh, you know, whatever the story, you know the story is in the public domain. My God, hallelujah. And, and uh, there was no money, there was nothing. At the end of the day, after many years, is when God spoke to me in 2007 and told me because of what I was preparing you for. I didn't want you to go to that institution. I wanted you to go here. My God, hallelujah. And then that is it because of the assignment that God had for me. And now I'm comforted and I'm happy in what I'm doing. Every time I, I minister, you know, that's where my joy is full. Because why? I am now living the preordain of God, the predetermination of God. I mean, the purpose of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. And I hear the Lord say many other times, you know, we want to push things our way, even through prayer and fasting. And you realize as you push them, nothing is changing, nothing is happening. Hallelujah. So that when, when things get to that level, you sit back as a child of God and ask God, Father, what is your will? What is your will? Because I, I told you from the beginning, we have entered into a juncture. We have entered into a season where there is no time for waste. There is no energy for waste. There is no resources for waste. So anything you're asking God for, it must have a purpose in him as far as your, your destiny is concerned. So if it is not going that direction, no matter how much we fast and pray, heaven will remain silent. Hallelujah. So we are looking at the the people who are refined. And I want the church to know that, that it is in God we live. It is in him we live, move and have our being. That means everything about us is cushioned in him. It's cushioned. And I have always said, and I want to say this because the Spirit of God is reminding me the same thing. You know, this work of faith is like, you know, the, the life of a fish. You, you remove yourself from the, from, the, from the presence of the Father. You become like the prodigal son. You remember the story of the prodigal son. So we must remain there. We, mu we must operate there. We do our businesses in the presence of the Lord. We handle our marriages in the presence. We handle everything, our ministries. We cannot do it outside God. 
So everything about us is God. In the beginning, God. So it has to be in everything must revolve around him in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when you look at the uh, at, at so many stories in the Bible, I read for you yesterday, uh, some of the stories, I mean some of the things I told you yesterday. If you have not heard this, kindly go to the word of God. So because of the season, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, we must now carefully live. Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 17. We cannot live as fools. We must carefully live. We cannot handle our, our businesses and our matters like people who do not know the season. We must now carefully live in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, uh, day number nine. Uh, day number what? Yeah, let me see. We are in day number what? Is somebody aware? We are in day number eight. So day number eight. So yesterday, we the Lord was speaking to us that we should not water down the the ghost. We should not water down the truth. We should not water down the truth. Even if everybody um, is going that direction, kindly be grounded on the truth. Be grounded because our freedom is not in anything else. Is in the truth. Truth is Jesus, and that's why the Bible says, "He who, when He has set you free, you are free indeed." That is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Hallelujah. So our freedom in this pervasive and adulterous generation is in the truth. Is in the knowledge of the truth. So we must keep on acquiring knowledge. I read for you yesterday Proverbs chapter eighteen. You can read all of it. You can go down there. Kindly read Proverbs chapter eighteen. Happy to see you, Shiko. Shalom, my, shalom. God bless you from Mombasa. God bless you. Now, let, let us maintain the integrity of this hour. Let us acquire the wisdom and the knowledge of this hour by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So as we are talking about this, even what we spoke yesterday about, um, you know, not watering down the truth. So that means uh, the Spirit of God is reminding me something where I'm seated. Don't compromise the truth. Anywhere you are representing us as the part of the body of Jesus Christ, kindly don't water down, don't compromise the truth. Do that business in truth. How do you have things every day in truth? Don't water it down. Because why? Let me tell you, the Bible says we are all members of the body of Jesus Christ, but each one of us is a member individually. So when you mess up, you are affecting us. I love that, uh, you know, that uh, clarification that each one of us is a member individually. So when you have messed up, you know, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are affecting the body. But let me tell you, you are going to be uh, dealt with as an individual. So that's why I have always said, when somebody says some people messed up in a nation, so the entire church in a nation was, was, was uh, you know, was judged. God cannot judge his, God cannot judge the church. God cannot judge, there's no scripture like that. God cannot judge the church or cannot uh, now, uh, uh, you know, uh, punish the church because of one person sinning in a nation. Seriously. Hallelujah. So everybody should carry their own clothes. I don't want to go that direction. So what is the Lord speaking to us this night? Be careful about the divine setups, the refined I'm talking about I'm talking to the refined. The Lord is saying this particular night, be very careful about every divine setup. And I want each one of us to know that the season we have entered into, even as we come to the close of the month of, of, uh, of March, let me prepare you for, for the next quarter of year 2024. What we are, we are going to see and what we are going to encounter are divinely orchestrated setups by God as you know, that are meant to take us to the destiny that God ordained for us. We are going to encounter orchest divinely orchestrated setups that are meant to heal us that are meant, are meant to comfort us, that are meant to reconcile us, that are meant to lift us, that are meant to uh, lift us up, hallelujah, that are meant to do something new or uh, bring something new or usher us to something new, hallelujah. So I'm, I'm sent by the Lord your way to prepare you for divine orchestrations and I want you to be very careful even about any person, God will bring you away from this night. Be very, very careful about every call that you're going to receive be very, very careful about every meeting that the Lord will, this, uh, will, will uh, you know, allow you to be a part of. Be very, very careful about every kind of an interaction that God will bring your way. I want to say tonight, by the masses of God, we, it is not business as usual. Hallelujah. I told you three days ago, there is a termination that the Lord has brought in our walk of faith. There is something that the Lord has said, this one cannot go beyond this. Hallelujah. And what we see in the Bible when God brought us uh, some people, you know, to that kind of a season, what we see is that what was affecting.
in them becomes a thing of the past. Divinely uh, God sought out those matters. Divinely God sent somebody to sort out those matters. Divinely God connects those people. Divinely God intervenes by his own power. An angel is sent. A person comes. My God or oh God takes you there. My Jehovah. Hallelujah. So that whatever is, this is what we are seeing. You know, for the destinies of the children of Israel, after 400 and that years, God says, I have seen the affliction. I have heard the cry. That does not mean all the other years. God was not seeing or, or hearing. The Bible says, my God, he is he, the God who watches over Israel. He does not sleep or slumber. It was just a matter of his time. Come on, somebody came to encourage you. What you have been crying about, it has been just a matter of time. Rikata Ramazia. Hallelujah. What you have been waiting on God for, it had just been a matter of time. So God is ushering us into a season and he's saying we must be very, very careful about the divine setups. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, a connection will come your way. Oh my God, and this connection will be calling all that you have been longing to have in your life as far as your destiny in God is concerned. Because why? Even as I'm speaking to us this tonight, it is about the destinies that God preordained for us. It is not for a show off. It is about the destinies, I mean our destinies in the Lord for his own glory in the name of Jesus. So be very, very careful. Be very, very careful who God is bringing your way. It is not business as usual. Kindly don't look at people with the eye of the flesh. The Bible says that the things of the spirit or the things of God are spiritually discerned. We have entered into a season where our IQ, as far as discernment is concerned, must be on very high gear. Hallelujah. We, it must be on very high gear. Hallelujah. You know, some, some of the prayers we have been making and some of the things that took us to prayer mountains and all those places, uh, this time around, God is serving them to us. God is bringing them to us. God is bringing, I mean, taking us there. So you must be very, very careful when a divine setup comes your way so that my brother, my sister, you can speak when you're supposed to speak. Hallelujah. You can inquire when you're supposed to inquire. My God, hallelujah. You can involve when you're supposed to involve. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is what we are seeing. You know, one of the wives of the sons of the prophet, you know, had, had been left with some debts. And there were so many other men or there were so many other people, even her own neighbors. My God, in a, where she used to live, there were so many, there were so many people, there were so many other neighbors. Actually, even the sons of the prophet were there. But when Elisha gets to that vicinity, the woman is discerning. The woman is very quick, quick to discern. This is my divine setup. This is my I know this is a divine orchestration. And this is what we are seeing with a woman called the Canaanite woman. Hallelujah. She was not even a believer. Of Jesus Christ, she was not even a believer in the things of God. She just she was just a religious person. My God, Hallelujah! And what do we see when she she comes to Jesus? When she she says it's the moment she goes to Jesus, the disciples are even telling Jesus, "Can we chase her away? You know she's disturbing us." My God, Hallelujah! And, and this woman is persisting. This is how um, this woman is persisting. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, you cannot give in until you become that which God has ordained. You cannot give up. These are not the days of giving up. These are not the days of complaining and murmuring. These are not the days of looking at people and waiting on people. These are the days of looking up. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We are looking up because our help is in him. He knows who is holding what you need. He knows who he has. What and that let me tell you when he says send the message, just send them and keep quiet. When he says make this call, just make the call and keep quiet. When he says involve this person in this, just involve them and keep quiet. He knows how he's going to deal with the heart of those people so that you become that which he preordained for you. So it is a moment to be very, very alert in our spirit. So this particular eighth day of the eighth night, the Lord is speaking to the refined and he's saying, Be very careful about the divine setups. Be very, very careful about the divine setups. And let me tell you, my brethren, we have entered into a season where God will cause there to be, you know, massive restoration. In this, you know, when God is talking about, you know, alerting us to be very careful about the divine orchestration or the divine setups, it's because God has brought us into a season of massive restoration. Let me tell you, you are gone anything that you have lost. My God, I love what the Bible says in the book of John chapter, chapter 2. You know, even the ears, anything that we have lost, 
Hallelujah. Anything that you have not enjoyed as far as this life is concerned before we get to eternity. My God, hallelujah. God is already working things. And because why? Jesus is not coming for a defeated church. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. So we have entered into a moment where there shall be massive restoration. Visions will be restored. Dreams will be restored. Connections will be restored. Hallelujah. Anything that is supposed to be in our lives, as far as our destinies and our inheritance in God, I know are concerned. God is causing a massive restoration. And I want the church to know when the restoration comes, it is going to bring a relief. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, so the restoration, the restoration is coming with a relief. The restoration is coming with a relief. Whatever we have, you know, whatever has been ailing us, the places and the things, you know, that have been ailing us and causing us pain because the season of the termination has come. So it is now a moment for us to be restored. We shall be restored in good health. Our visions and our dreams in the Lord will be restored. Our destinies will be restored. And that's why on the first day or the second day, I spoke to us about the restructuring. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the restoration is bringing to us the relief. The relief. And that's why you're going to realize some of the burdens that have been a hindrance in your prayer life, in your, in your progress. They are going to be a thing of the past. Because why? This is not the working of any man. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. This is about the Spirit of God. You know, uh, you know, in the book of Luke chapter 1, from that, that, that five going down there, that eight down there, Mary is asking, how shall it this be? And the angel is telling her, angel Gabriel is telling her, you know, the, the Spirit of God will come, or will come upon you, and the power from on high will overshadow you. So the transaction of this hour in our season of the new, it's about the power of God and the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what is restoration? What is the restoration? What is restoration? Even as the Lord is speaking to us, happy to see all of you as you come on board, kind of share the broadcast. So, what is the restoration? Restoration is being returned to a former condition. A former condition. There was a condition. There was a you know. There was a you know. There was a, a praise. There was a you know. There was a a, a, a condition. There was a praise. It it can be you know whatever it is. Hallelujah. So when it is returned back to originality, you know, when there is the returning back to originality, you know, to that original shape, to that original praise, to that original condition, that is what is called restoration. Hallelujah. So it is bringing up to date. It is bringing up to date. It also calls for repair. Hallelujah. Because uh, uh, for something to be restored, it has to be repaired in case there were some uh, breakages and what have you. It is fixing. It, it is, uh, you know, and it is, um, uh, it is fabishing, you know, fabishing, you know that. It is reconditioning. It is revamping, you know, hallelujah. So all those words are meaning, uh, you know, restoration or they are meaning, rest, you know, to be restored. Hallelujah. So this is what God is doing. And that's why I'm saying, if you look at what uh, the Lord is doing, when it came to the woman with the issue of blood, there's where she's coming from. You know, her life is messed up in pain and what have you. So what God does is to bring into a termination that season. And now what, what we see is God is divinely orchestrating. There's a divine setup for her. For the other time, she was looking for other men like her. But this time, she's now going direct to Jesus. And she does not want even to be known. Now, this is how divine orchestrations appear, I mean, you know, happen or they appear. Hallelujah. So she's able to fit in there. This can only be prompted by the Spirit of God. There is no prophet who told her. Nobody introduced Jesus, I mean, to introduce Jesus to her. This can only be prompted of the Spirit. And that's why you see, when God has terminated the brightness of Bartimaeus, what do we see? Jesus passes by, by at that place. Hallelujah. And Bartimaeus and Aquarius and he's told, it is Jesus of Nazareth who is passing by. And what do we see? Something arouses him. Something from his inside. This can. This is not something carnal. It's not even about him. It's about the the the, 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 the preordination of God. It's about the purpose of God for him. And because why Jesus came 
to do the work of the of the father i mean to do the will of the father and to finish his work so when we saw jesus attend to bartimaeus and god allowing jesus to pass by that that area and, and causing bartimaeus to you know to raise his voice it was already orchestrated in heaven so down here it was now being i know uh, i mean uh, physically perfected according to the preordination of god in the name of jesus and that's why i'm asking us be very very careful be very careful my brethren it is not business as usual. What you are looking for and what has taken you for, I mean, for prayers and what has taken you, you know, to wait on God for so many years, it is now released. Our destinies are released. And anything that is supposed to be in our destinies, those things are released. Anybody, any praise and any, anything, any praise and anybody that is supposed to be in our destinies, as far as our, the purpose of God is concerned, those things are there for our, for our take. Those things are released. The people are released. The praises are released. Hallelujah. And even that, my God, and even those things are released. So it is us to be very, let me tell you, it was not coincidental. The healing, my God, of the woman of, with the issue of blood had already been released. So what God does is now bring her into a divine setup, into a divine setup, a divine orchestration that is gone and the Spirit of God quickens her to be able to fit in. Hallelujah. This is what we are seeing to someone like Mary who had been betrothed to Joseph for marriage. So what do we see? You know, it, it is not easy. I'm a woman I know when you are in love and somebody comes to, in, to intercept that, you're already preparing for, for, for a wedding. It is not easy. Hallelujah. And what do we see? Because it was a divine setup. It was orchestrated from heaven. Mary is not, you know, she's not struggling to fit in. And I want to say to each one of us from this night, you are not going to struggle to fit in into that which is of God. And I want the church to know one of the things that you must be very careful about is, you no know, the inner peace that praise is giving you. The inner peace that, 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 that connection is giving you. The inner peace that thing is giving you. If, if it is still striving and straining and, and causing some panic, kindly, you are still not yet there. Anything that is of God in this earth, this is what we are seeing. Daniel going down the den of the lion. He's not panicking. There's no panic in him. Shadrach, they can see the fire is here, the physical fire. My God, no panic. My God, hallelujah. Joseph has been thrown into the prison. No panic. My God, even from the, from the time the brothers are throwing him in the pit, no panic, nothing. Because why? That thing is of God. So anywhere you're going to find yourself, as far as your, as your destiny in God is concerned, one of the assurance that you're going to have is the inner peace. That the, and hear the Spirit of God say, the inner peace is bringing to us that comfort that we need for now. Hallelujah. That solace, that, 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 that uh, you know, that, that, the inner, that inner, that inner, you know, solace that we need for now. It is going to come because it is not our operation. It is the operation of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I pray for each one of us this night, even as we come to the end of the month of March, according to the calendars of men. Hallelujah. Let us be aligned to that which is of God in this hour. And we are going to enjoy the, I mean, the restoration and the relief that God has already released for the sake of the children that are named by his name in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So whatever many of us have gone through and whatever we have been, we have been through in the past years and in the past days, no, that season was meant to remodel us. It was meant to remodel us. It was meant to uh, to quicken our motor bodies so that, you know, so that whatever was supposed to be cut off, you know, falls off so that now God can, you know, can entrust us. And I want you to look at your life, you know, for so many of us, I don't know about you, but the Spirit of God has done a total makeover, a total makeover. My goodness. Oh my God, hallelujah. Even the courtners can tell you this person is not the same. You know, it's a, it's a total makeover. That is what the, the, the Spirit of God has been doing, but in the past four years. Hallelujah. And, and I've been telling some of you when I encounter you, even your body size will change. Because, you know, some, some, some people, where we are coming from, you know, there's, there's a way we are used to. And there's, you know, because of that kind of a lifestyle, even the body size 
was swallowed up because of the uh, was swallowed up in that season. But now in this season, as the Lord is introducing us to the new restoration that is going to bring relief, you realize even your countenance. This is what we are seeing in the life of Anna when such a season was introduced by God to her through the, 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 the declaration of, of the mouth of, uh, of the priest in the, in the temple, Eli. What do we see? Even her countenance changes. Tell your neighbor, my neighbor, hallelujah. Even the wrinkles are going to be a thing of the past. Some of you have, have white hair and you're too young. It is going to be a thing of the past without even applying any chemical. Those things are going to be a thing of the past. We shall be restored in our glory. We shall be restored in our health. We shall be restored, my God, hallelujah, in our favor. My God, in whatever restoration, any kind of restoration that Father wants to bring, we are ready for it. Hallelujah. So the Lord has been doing a makeover, but you know, through the process he has, he has taken us. And uh, for some of us, if that's what I've been telling us. Uh, if the Lord tells you not to relocate or, or shut down our business, kindly just obey because why? Uh, he knows what is best for us. Uh, and as for some of us, what God has really been doing, that's why in the past four years, anything you tried never worked, you held here, nothing worked, you tried this, blah, blah. You even said God has said, and God has spoken this ten years, five years, and at the end of the day, things, things were, I mean, things, I mean, went back to a study still. Why? Because the Lord has been doing a total overhaul, a total overhaul. A total overhaul. I hear the Lord say, you know, cleaning us. This is what uh, in uh, in medical terms. I'm not a medic, but I hear them. They, they, <laughs> they say you clean your blood. Hallelujah. You detox. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have we have been through these things. So there have been spiritual detoxes, detoxation, and detoxization. <laughs> that one you can mention it. Hallelujah. So the, the Lord has been doing that, the total overhaul, you know, causing that detoxation, you know, for, for you know, because some of the some of the elements, even some of the beliefs we have held before, they are not according to the word of God. Some of the companies we have kept, you know, some of the attachments, some of even marriages and so many beasts, my God, hey, I, I, you know, it, we are coming from a place of a lot of filthiness. We are coming from a place of a lot of filthiness. So in the, in the past, about four years, what God has been doing, even if you held on it, it will still go. Even if you held on that business, God will still make sure it has gone out of your hands. Because why? The Lord has been doing you know, a total overhaul. So that as we are, we, as he has now brought us into this season, you know, to be served into the world or to be manifested in the world as the sons of God, we shall be manifested as people without wrinkles or spots. Because this is the church Jesus is coming for. Hallelujah. And our garments of the wedding will be spotless. Hallelujah. So God has been dealing with that. Where you think it's the devil that was working out, it is God. It is the arm of God. It is not the devil. It is the arm of God. And I still want to say something. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, Paul is saying, and we know this thing is at our fingertips. So as, as you continue being called for deliverance and rebuking of demons, everywhere demons, God has been working on our characters. He has been working on our attitudes. He has been working on so many things so that we are not affected by what is, is in the world. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 2, the world is full of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. So for that not to be affected by that, because let me tell you church, the things of the world are not going to become better. The foundations are crumbling down. You know, that is the direct I've been telling you. Morally and, uh, you know, intellectually and everything. The world is going down like this. The graph of, of the world is going down like this. But on the other hand, the things of the kingdom of God are going up. Because the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard high. So we are already operating in a race started by the Spirit of God. And that's why Zechariah will tell you, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, yeah, Jesus Christ. Happy to see all of you. Happy to see man of God. I'm seeing all of you. So we are talking about being careful. For those who are joining up with us, we are talking about day number eight. The Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is speaking to the refined, the season of the refined, where we are coming from. You look back and you say, my God, I used to struggle with such kind of a character. So it is God who allowed you to be that way for a time. And then when now, when now he has crossed you over to this other side, my God, that character is dealt with. That habit is dealt with. So that now you are able to equip others. You are able to train others. My God, that's why the Bible is saying the fields are ripe. The fields are ready. So what is needed now are laborers, not spectators in the kingdom of God, not church bench warmers. 
My God, hallelujah. My God, workers. That's why the Bible says, blessed is that servant who will be found so doing. Not the people who did and now they are enjoying their, their comfort, but the servant will be found so doing. So we are, we are, we are arising to do. You, God has taken you through that so that now you can arise and do so that other people can now find you doing it and their lives are going to be transformed. Because that's why the Bible says we are co-laborers with the Lord, we are co-workers with Him. So everything about us has now been upgraded. We are not where we were. The season of God is not where it was. So the season has shifted. It's a season of all new. So we have been upgraded. We are updated. That's why the voices like what I'm saying tonight is coming your way. This is for your update. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, we have been made it. My God, hallelujah. We have been reconstructed. Some of us, you know, some, some, some pieces of wood, I'm talking about spiritual matters, were removed in the process of our making. So in, in, the, in, in the course of, uh, of, the, of the season of God, the four years, and, um, you know, the four years, uh, you know, I'm talking about the season of the four years. So what, the, what God has, um, has allowed you to go through, it has really reconstructed you. You are not the same person, and that's what you're going to realize from this hour. My God, you are going to dream again. Hallelujah. You are rising again. My God, hallelujah. Let me tell you, you are going to see the, the sprouting afresh of, of, of dreams and visions and ministries, business ideas. Because why? We are in a season of taking over. We are in a season of taking over. And we are not taking over, you know, the way we were before. This time around, we have the knowledge, we have the wisdom. And that this wisdom is not, you know, the other wisdom, but the heavenly wisdom. And this is what we are seeing in Egypt. God is introducing Joseph and giving him the heavenly wisdom. My God, hallelujah. How can a prisoner, within a very uh, short moment, he's interpreting a dream and he's now beginning to act on it. My God, even being able to save food for seven years, preparing the nation in a season of famine, that the nation will not suffer uh, famine, I mean will not suffer hunger. This can only be heaven and wisdom. Somebody who has not gone to school, he has not done economics and all those things. This can only be God. Hallelujah. And this is what God is doing. Now, have you ever wondered what is happening to Nehemiah? Nehemiah, somebody who was serving the king a few moments, then uh, you know a burden comes uh, uh, about the, the fallen wall of Jerusalem and, and uh, that thing hit Nehemiah my God and, and he says I cannot enjoy he goes to fasting and praying and God gives him favor before the king my God, hallelujah so what happens next is the formula God is giving him the formula even my God of going to spy without telling anybody, you know, going down there and, and God is now bringing on board people who are ready to do the assignment. Hallelujah. Now, something that had never been done before. And uh, let me tell you, where God is burdening him to go, there are high priests there, there are priests there, there are other, there are levites there. But they had never had such kind of a burden. So God is giving new burdens, even to vessels you cannot believe. Even to verses you cannot believe. So God is, God has been uh, upgrading us. The process has upgraded us. The process has updated us. The process has made us, you know, and uh, and and uh, and uh, you know, reconstructed us in so many things. That's why you realize, uh, my brethren, there are things you have struggled with before. This time around, you will not struggle with them. Their characters and some habits you have struggled with before. This time around, you're not going to struggle with them. Hallelujah. So we cannot be trusted. And I want the church to know, allow me to remove some curtain here. I said I'm never harassed by... Hallelujah. So, um, so uh, the system God has brought us into, we cannot be trusted with what God preordained for us. God did not just trust uh, Joseph with whatever he's trusting him for, immediately when he was sold to the Ishmaelites, he took him through a process. So where we are right now, but came from the month of April, God is going to trust each one of us with whatever he preordained for us as far as our inheritance in him is concerned. So prepare your heart, prepare your house, and prepare everything about you. God is trusting us. God is trusting us with our inheritance. Let me tell you, the Bible says, Paul is saying, as long as a hair is still a child. <laughs> oh, 
Woohoo! Tell your neighbor the process has matured us. Hallelujah. The process has matured us. We have no hate in us. We have no bitterness in us. You touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor if you are watching with your neighbor. My God, hallelujah. We cannot last. We have no jealousy in us. My God, hallelujah. Because why the process has really worked on us. We want we are not the way we were two two months ago. Every moment. God is maturing us and making us better vessels. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So the restoration is, um, you know, is meant to cause us to live and move and have our being holy, be dependent on him. So the process, I mean, the, the restoration of this hour is taking us back to our originality where our whole being is totally dependent on God. Hallelujah. Where we turn either side. I love what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 13, verse 21. When we, in those days, now we are saying about these days, from now, you know, where we are coming from, you know, we, we, we did some of the things as we desired, and, uh, you know, we were hit back and set back here and there. But this time around, the remnants of God's people, the refined of God, my God, hallelujah, we are being taken back to our originality, where our, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, our whole life reward. As dependent of God. That's why I uh, you know the Bible says in Acts 17 and verse 28, in him we live, depending on the version of your Bible, in him we live, move and have our being. So our whole our whole being is totally dependent on him. And this is what God desired, even from Genesis, that uh, you know the man he created be totally dependent, I mean dependent on him. So God is taking us back to our originality for his own glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So um then now in that God is I mean God is giving us our beginning. God is giving us our beginning. Hallelujah. God is giving us our beginning. Prepare yourself for a beginning. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself for a beginning. This is what we are seeing when the heart of God has come to restore somebody like the woman with the issue of blood. And a woman who had even sold her everything. So from that encounter, there is a beginning for her. But Myers gets get his own beginning. Hallelujah. Jairus, there is a beginning. Nobody encountered Jesus in the season when God came to perfect his agenda in their lives and remained as there was a restoration. There was a beginning. There was a new chapter. And I want the church to know that we have entered into a season where God is giving us a new chapter altogether. So the kind of mentality uh, you know, we have had before, you know, some of, some of these things are going to be a thing of the past. And you realize even the working of this hour is going to be very, very different. The working, and that's why I'm telling you, like Nehemiah, God is even introducing you to very new people. You are working with very new people. You are not even forcing nobody to anything. Things are just flowing. Hallelujah. And that's why I told you the other day, God is, has brought us into a season of easiness. My God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So the restoration is calling with it our relief. The restoration is calling with it our relief. So what is a relief? What is a relief? <laughs> Hallelujah. A relief is simply uh, a reassurance. This is a reassurance and a relaxation. Ha, hallelujah. <laughs> Following release from anxiety. Hallelujah. And distress. My God. Hallelujah. So that it is a feeling of reassurance. So uh, the restoration is coming with that feeling of reassurance that will bring you away relaxation following that release from any kind of anxiety and distress we are coming from levels and we are coming from places and some days pass where some of us were not sure of our tomorrow but let me tell you the restoration of this hour is coming with a relief there shall be such an inner reassurance hallelujah you know, you are going to have to get hold of it as a person. This one is not impacted by anybody. Nobody can lay their hands on you for this. All of us together as remnants of God's people under the sun, we are going to encounter this. Because we are, I told you from the beginning, we are flowing from three things. We are flowing from the same three things. The same spirit, baptism, and the same Lord. So what God is doing here is what he's doing in Australia. Is what, by the way, we are resonating from the same frequency. 
and I, I'm getting excited because my God, you are encountering people who are understanding the language you are speaking of the hour. My God, hallelujah. So what is a relief? The relief, now what, what does the relief do? The relief will bring your way consolation. The relief is of the hour. It's meant to bring our way consolation. It is going to bring your way comfort. Hallelujah. It is also going to bring your way sorrows, calmness. And that's why I've been telling the church, my God, if there's something the Lord has given us in this hour, is soberness. Hallelujah. Soberness and calmness. Hallelujah. The panic that was before is not there. Even if the nations of the world, the government, will introduce whatever they want to introduce. This is what you are seeing. The calmness with the people like Daniel. My God, somebody can see lions down here. But calmness and soberness. Because why? I no longer live. It's not to me. You know, I am a son of God. My God, I told you a story the other day about the driver of a train with a son, in, you know, with a son on board and other passengers are panicking because of the meanders and the, the corners, the train, I mean, the, the driver is navigating. But the boy is not, you know, is not panicking. He's just laughing and getting excited. Actually, as the train was going, I can see that boy in the train, you know, he was just, you know, you know moving with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the way that the truck was moving. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, when people go to their destination, they are asking, oh, you know, what is it? Why are you mocking us? And the boy is, uh, because I had confidence. My father knows I'm on board. Let me tell you, the Bible says in, in, my, I mean, in Psalm 24, the earth and the fullness therein belongs to God. The globalists are laboring with their new world order to bring to us the new world religion, the new world currency, I mean the, the, world, the one world currency, one world, one world religion, one world government, and all whatever they want to do. But as they are going that direction, hallelujah, as the world will be navigating, navigating, any navigating, come on somebody, as the world will be navigating, have peace in your heart, have peace in your mind, because why? Shalom is your portion, hallelujah. The owner of this earth and the fullness they are in is uh, your father, hallelujah. No matter what they will introduce, no matter what governments of the world will come up with, hallelujah. We shall enjoy shalom, because why? The earth and the fullness they are in belongs to our father. Hallelujah. So uh, let everybody, that's why even our language has to change. That's why the Bible says that just shall live by faith. So uh, we shall not speak their language. That's why in my nation, when they are complaining about the government, I don't know, the economy, I don't know what, I tell the people around my life, hallelujah, we shall confess the things of our kingdom. Because we are here, but we are not for here. Oh my God, hallelujah. And that's why I've been preparing us for the past three years. We are going to live here on earth right now. As if Jesus tells us, we are going to live as it happened to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. You know, he's in a land where God has told him, stay in this land where I'm going to show you. And the land is in a famine. It's in a season of famine. My God, hallelujah. The physical famine is not affecting the son of Abraham. Hallelujah. So God is going to do it. It's just for a short while. You have persevered. You have waited. You have not compromised the standard of the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, my brethren, it's just a matter of seconds. My God, God is giving us a new chapter, introducing us to a very new story so that his name may be glorified in our generation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So uh, the, the, the consolation. I've told you, so for those people who are joining up with us, we are talking about, today we are on day number eight, and we are talking about, as the Spirit of God has read me and gave me a statement, that we should be very, very careful about the divine setups, or the, the, orchest the divine orchestrations of God in this hour, because that is the season we are in. Hallelujah. So uh, many of us are coming from places who are beaten and shattered and all that, but this time around, the season has introduced us you know, to a new kind of audience altogether, new kind of interaction altogether. That's why, kindly, if you do not hear the word God gave me yesterday, go to the word of yesterday so that you can catch up where we are by the grace of God. So the 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 the, the you know being careful about um uh being careful about uh, the divine orchestration or the divine setups, you know, it's going to bring us into a moment of restoration, and the restoration of this hour is carrying with it our relief. So I'm in the chapter of relief right now. That's what I'm talking about. And so I've said the relief is bringing our way consolation. 
It is bringing our way. And this is, you know, God is dealing with us as individual. It is bringing our comfort, our sorrows, our calmness, our relaxations, our repose, our ease. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you're going to realize that anything that was affecting you and uh, hindering you to move forward as a son of God, you know, the process, I mean, the, I mean the season that God has introduced us into, it being dealt with. Even without, even without your much labor and nothing, God is dealing with it. God is dealing with it. Do you know uh, a divine setup in prison? No, no, it, it, you know, and the, do you know this was the first time Joseph is introducing dreams? Because by the time he came from his father's house, he was a dreamer. You remember? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you remember my neighbor. This guy was a dreamer. And by the time God is now about to introduce him to the new chapter that is now take actually that was the, the last staircase that now you know was ushering him into the destiny that God preordained for him. Hallelujah. So what do you see? The Spirit of God is giving him uh, you know a divine setup and he's very quick able to fit in. Quickly, the man of God is able to fit in. Because why? This can only be prompted of the Spirit of God. No, there were so many other prisoners. It was not only the butler and the baker. Why is, this, why is Joseph talking to the butler and the baker? And these are people ordinarily, even in my nation, people who are serving in the king, in, in our state house. These are the kind of people as, a, as an ordinary person, as an ordinary citizen, particularly as a, as a, as a, as a slave. You know, you cannot get an appointment with them, my God. So what do you see? God is orchestrating. These are called divine setups. These are divine setups. Hallelujah. And that's what the Bible says. God knows the earth from the beginning. He calls the earth from the beginning. As God was getting Joseph from his father's house through the hands of the brothers, he knew at one point you'll go to the prison. Because why? Uh -uh. God is telling the children of Israel. In the book of uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 10 and 11. <laughs> I love verse 10. You know God waited. Tell your neighbor God has been waiting. <laughs> so God is waiting for his own people. These are his own people. They go through whatever they are going through. 70 years in Babylon. How many years are you counting? Four years or two years? And you, are, you want to tell us how you have gone through wilderness. My God, hallelujah. So God waited. God waited 70 years. And then verse, verse 11 he comes and tells them, For I know the plans I have for you. My God, hey, even through what you have been through and whatever you have encountered, I know the plans I have for you. Hallelujah. And these are plans for good or for your welfare to give you a future and an expected end. So, my God, so nothing, you know, your, your, your life and your destiny in me has not been tampered with. I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm up to. Hallelujah. So, what you're going to see is that you're going to enjoy alleviation. You're going to enjoy alleviation. You're going to enjoy ease. You're going to enjoy deliverance. Hallelujah. And this is going to cause a removal of some things, some things like pain, some things like pain, distress, and oppression that have, you know, have really been an, uh, you know, an obstruction to whatever you are supposed to become as a son of God in this hour. And I want the church to know God has introduced us into a season of the manifestation of the sons of God. And I want each one of us to know that the manifestation is coming through us. Let me tell you, my brethren, my God, hallelujah. Me, I love God. <laughs> Let me tell you, church, manifestation will come through us. Let me tell you, Jesus, the people out there, they do not know who he was when he was in a, you know, for the 18 years from the age of 12 up to the age of 30. You know, that is a silent moment. We did not see miracles and all of you. The boy is working with his father, the carpenter. The, the, you know, the father was a carpenter. And what, what do we see? When now God is, you know, uh, you know uh, preparing Jesus for a season of manifestation as who he was. Hallelujah. What do we see? He's causing him now to begin moving, you know, village to village, city to city. And in the course of that moving, the sick are being healed. The dead are coming to life. We cut our Amazia. Hallelujah. So the season we have entered into, the manifestation is by works. The man, and, and, and it's not about our works. It's about his works. It's about his will. Hallelujah. You know, the, 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 <laughs> the giftings of God in the season we have entered into. That's why the Bible is talking about the faith with actions. 
Hallelujah. We are the people who are living by faith and faith with actions. So let me tell you, we are going to be manifested through works. The sick will be healed. What doctors cannot handle, the sons of God are going to heal this. And the glory of God will be manifested. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God has released in the world. My God, God has released in the world the people with the kind of wisdom, the divine wisdom, the godly wisdom, the heavenly wisdom, like Joseph. My God, in some governance, you know, uh, you know, some, some, uh, some uh, I mean, I mean uh, in the positions of governance in some nations, you know, where governments are going to be stuck. My God, the justice of our time will be called out because, well, let me tell you, hallelujah. You know, something that astonishes me is that the king of Babylon, Rikataramazia, my God, you may think they don't know you. My God, your prayer life is not hidden. My God, hallelujah. The king of Babylon knew who David, I mean, knew who Daniel was. And after the end of it all, he goes very early in the morning, you know, where the den of the lion was, and he's calling out Daniel. And he's asking Daniel, Ah, Daniel, has the God you faithfully serve, my God, rescued you, how preserved you, depending on the version of your Bible. So, our walk of faith is not hidden to our neighbors, to our family levels. It's not hidden in that office. Kindly maintain it there. Maintain the integrity of the season. Walk in the ways of God. Your life is not hidden. That's why the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. So who we are is about to be manifested, not because of so many other things, but because, my God, we are in a generation, and we are going, my Father, we are in a generation of workers. We are going to work for the sake of the kingdom of our God. Hallelujah. And I've been telling each one of us out there, when they call upon your name in that office, don't say you don't know how to pray, you are not a pastor. My God, hallelujah. Have entured the scripture. The Bible says that these signs and wonders, they will fall all those who believe. If you are a believer, just appear. My God, God will give you the utterance of what to say there. Just appear. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You do it the Esther way. Esther is appearing before the king. She has not been summoned. And the favor of God is following her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, oh, hallelujah. So, in a nutshell tonight, on whatever time it is in, in your country, I see we have people from other, other continents. So, in a nutshell, the Lord is saying tonight, ha, this is what the Lord is saying. I have already prepared my people for a shifted season. The season is already shifted. Hallelujah. The season is already shifted. So, God has already prepared us. Nobody is preparing but Myers. There is no usher there. Nobody is preparing the woman with the issue of blood when her season shifted. Divine rain. Nobody is preparing her. This is done by God himself. Hallelujah. Nobody is preparing Joseph for nothing. My God. Hallelujah. This is the working of God. And God is even giving him the formula and the know-how and the wisdom and all that. Even giving him the interpretation of the dreams. This is the working of God himself. Hallelujah. So whatever God wants you to appear and whatever God wants anyone else over any one of us to accomplish in this hour, God is already on it. God is already preparing us. Hallelujah. Oh my God. So I love what the Bible says in the book of Job 42. I love this scripture. Job, Job 42 and verse 2. The Bible, and I mean, after what Job, I mean, after what Job has been through, you know, somebody who is righteous. You remember God had testified about Job to the devil. You know, uh, after what Job has been through, he, he concludes by saying, I know you can do all things, and none of your purpose can be thwarted. Hallelujah. So God is now in the season we have entered into. Don't limit him, even to the only prophetic word you have received. Don't limit God to only what you have been taught and what you have read in the scriptures. Hallelujah. He can do all things. And even right now, he's still doing. He's still doing. Hallelujah, he's still doing. So let us agree with his purpose in his season. Agree with the purpose of God in his season. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So the season is about the purpose of God. And God is going to shape us. To shape us. And I want each one of us to know that the path that is leading to your purpose and to my purpose this season is already created. That is what the Lord told me to, to come and tell us, hallelujah, that the path 
that is that is leading to your inheritance, to my inheritance in God, according to his preordained purpose, according to his predetermination. That path is already now clear. That's why you realize, my God, hallelujah, nobody could, could, could mess up with the woman with the issue of blood. So because her path was clear, it was preordained of God, hallelujah, nobody could mess up with the, with the, with the Bartimaeus, even if they tried. People are even, uh, you, know, uh, you know, complaining about the killers. They tried, but nobody could stop it. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Because why? The path for the preordination of, of, of God in their lives, that path was already cleared. And of what it, let me tell you, it is God who is clearing the path for the life of, uh, of, uh, of Joseph in Egypt by getting him from the, from the hands of Potiphar and the wife. Because why? If God elevated Joseph in the lives of, uh, you know, of Potiphar, in, in, their, in their house, it would have brought a lot of warfare to him because he was a slave. My God, so God cleared the path by his own. Whatever somebody may have thought, it's a devil working out and causing the demotion in the life of Joseph. It is God! Hallelujah, church! It is raining heavily in the city of Nairobi. <laughs> Hallelujah! So it is God! It is God who is doing it. It is not the devil who is causing death. I mean, Joseph to be taken to the prison. It is God who is clearing the path. So there's some of the disconnection that came in your life. It is God who was clearing the path for your destiny. Hallelujah. So from this night, begin praising God. Hallelujah. From this night, begin exalting the name of the Lord. From this night, begin loving God for who he is. Begin celebrating for the masses of God. Begin adoring him because he's God. Hallelujah. What you thought was, I you know, was, was the demonic operation. It is God. And that's why you are alive. <laughs> because the enemy comes. The enemy comes to kill. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So you are, you are alive here. He has not killed you. And that's why God, God was in it. Hallelujah. And that's why uh, do, your best, you, I mean, do yourself good. Begin rejoicing and again like Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice. Hallelujah. So the pathway is now clear. Hide and note that. Have it at your fingertips. The path now is very clear in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying to the remnant of his people, uh, let us be careful about the divine orchestrations. Because why this time around, you may have failed in that gifting of God in your life. You may have stumbled. You may have, I know, you may have suffered shame here and there. But let me tell you, from this time and from this night, the Lord is saying, it is raining very heavily in Nairobi. Hallelujah. And I'm in an upper floor. Now, listen to this. Now, we shall not fail, we shall not fail, we shall not fail, and we shall not suffer shame in this hour. So I want you to know, as you are becoming careful by the help of the Spirit of God about the divine orchestrations and the divine, uh, you know, the divine setters, we are not going to fail, we are not going to be ashamed. That is why the butler and the baker, you know, they are not, they are not, they are not intimidating Joseph. They are not harassing him. That is why the king, when Esther has appeared before, before him, you know, he is not giving an order for her death because she had not been summoned by the husband. My God, those days were bad. <laughs> and why has to be summoned? <laughs> My God, she has to wait to be summoned. My God, hallelujah. So that is why God would not have allowed death you know, or anything that would have affected the destiny of Esther. My God, hallelujah. That's why God did not allow the lions to feed on Daniel. The fire, because he's a consuming fire, could not burn the three Hebrew boys. Hallelujah. That is God for you. So let us know when God has brought us in this season, let us know that we shall not suffer shame. No matter how thick the margin looks like between where you are and how things are and encourage yourself in the Lord. There'll be no shame. <laughs> so the other thing you're going to notice is that uh, uh, hallelujah we are we are supposed now from this night to be perceiving to be perceiving to be perceiving the new thing that the Lord is doing. Kaitre begin perceiving we are not going to despair. Hallelujah. So we are going to, uh, to perceive. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, 18, 19. 
when God is doing a new thing, you forget the past. And number two, you perceive. Can't you perceive it? Hallelujah. So begin perceiving the new thing that the Lord is doing in your life as an individual. This is an individual call. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So as the time has come by, I want us to know that we must not live in expectation. We must live in expectation. Kindly as we wake up every morning, be expectant. You know, and I hear the spirit of God say, we are like now that woman who has been expecting for nine, for nine months. Now we are in that last day. We are in that last moment. You know, the, the bad waters are broken. So we are in that last moment. Any time, any time, the push of this hour is because any time you can be, become that which God preordained for you. So remain in expectation. Remain in expectation. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And here the Spirit of God said, remain hopeful that tomorrow will be better. That, you know, you are yesterday may have been this way, but tomorrow will be better. So anytime you see the light of a new day, remain in that, expectation, in that expectation. Remain in that hope that God is accomplishing a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Christ. The other thing you are going to see, I mean, to, to have in your life is that, that alertness in the spirit. You cannot be expectant as a son of God in this hour, you know, unless you are in the spirit of God, unless you remain alert in the spirit. Because why? A lot is happening. A lot is happening in nations. A lot is happening in your house. A lot is happening around you everywhere. Because not everybody is, is, is catching the tide, the spiritual tide as you are catching it. Hallelujah. This one is only for the people who are reigned by God and the, 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 the spiritual or the prophetic GPS is able to locate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the other thing is be very alert. Number, the other number, then now, learn how to seize the moment. Hallelujah. Learn how to seize every moment that God brings your way. Learn how to seize every moment. You know, um, I'm dealing with so many of us and, uh, you know, even uh, the people I minister with around my life. And every, everybody has some fears in them because of your past encounters. I cannot relate with servants of God because of what I encountered. I cannot do this business. I tried three times. I failed. I can, and you know that business was the idea of God. I cannot because of bra bra. Let me tell you this time around, we are seizing the moment. This is a season of God with us and for us. So we are seizing this moment. So any prompting of the Spirit of God, we must act on it like yesterday. We are acting on it quickly. Hallelujah. So the other thing is, uh, hallelujah, each one of us must know this is a sole responsibility. It is a, it is a call for each one of us as an individual. My time is up. It, 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 it is a sole responsibility. It is a sole responsibility. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, our overcoming is through the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of our mouth, depending on the version of your Bible. So I want the church to know as I finish this particular morning, it's very early in the morning in my country. Now, I want each one of us to know, prophetess, and you are still very fresh. Yes, and I've not slept. <laughs> if you are not sleeping, we want to pray tonight. If you are within the city, you can join up with me. Now, listen to this. Hallelujah. So it's a season for a testimony. It's a season. So the divine setup and the divine orchestrations, what God is bringing our way are testimonies. So I'm preparing you from this night. Ah, Zikata Ramazia. Hallelujah. You have had testimonies of other people. Get yourself ready for your testimony. Hallelujah. So we have entered into a season of testimonies. We have entered into a season of testimonies. And I'm, I'm talking about real tangible testimonies. Hallelujah. I was bright but now I can see. I was lame, but now I can walk. My God, I was forgotten in Rodiba, but I'm now dining on the, on the king's table. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see it. I was barren, but now I have a child, I have children. My God, hallelujah. So that is the season we have entered into. Our victory of this hour is connected to our testimonies. And it is God who is giving us the testimonies of this hour. And he causing us to encounter testimonies of this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we have so many examples in the Bible. And I will, I will, I will, I will handle that tomorrow. Even as we finish the month of March. Hallelujah. Can we go to the word of God in the book of Isaiah chapter forty? 1 and verse 20. Allow me to read for you this scripture, even as I call it a close for the night. 
Oh my God, hallelujah. So the testimony is taking us here. The testimony is taking us here. Your testimony is taking you there. Regina, your testimony, my God. Hey, baby girl, your testimony is taking you here. So the Bible says that they may see and know. So that's why I'm saying it will not be hidden. It will not be hidden. Zacchaeus, come down in haste. Come down quickly. It is not hidden. The divine encounter of this hour, it will not be hidden. Penina may mock you two or three days or four days, but how many people know pregnancy cannot be hidden forever? So within three months, four months, something is happening in the stomach of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Hannah. Hallelujah. So the mocker seizes immediately. My God, hallelujah. So now people are going to see and know and consider and understand together that the heart of the Lord my God has done this, and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Hallelujah. So the Lord will either do it or create it. He will either do it or create it. And you know the Bible says we are co-working with him. So let me tell you, that, and that's why I told us yesterday, uh, the encounters of this hour, the encounters of this hour, the people did not hear that word yesterday, because I'm continuing from where I was yesterday. Kindly, the encounters of this hour, be very, very careful about your interactions. Because let me tell you, Every interaction that God is bringing your way should be able to add a plus, to, to add something that is taking you to the destiny that God ordained for you. We are coming from places where there was a lot of minuses, a lot of minuses, a lot of drawbacks and hitbacks and all that because of our interactions. But this time, our involvement and our interactions are all that of the Lord and they are ordained of Him. So we are very, very careful because why? We must get to the destinies that God ordained for us and it is for his own glory in Jesus' name. So the involvement of this hour and what God is accomplishing with us, the season is already shifted. Let me tell you, my brethren, people are going to see. I mean, they are going to see and know it is not hidden. The rewarding moment is not hidden. The restoration is not hidden. My God, hallelujah. The relief God is giving us, people will, uh, will see and know, my God, this, 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 even her countenance was like this. His countenance was this before. This is how his language was before. But now, you know, something has shifted. Something has changed. Because why? When such things happen, at such a moment like God has brought us, even our language will change. Hallelujah. Can I say this as I finish? Your language will change. Let me tell you. Maybe Boshefi. <laughs> Maybe Boshefi. When God has brought you in, into a sifted season, if the environment changes, the setup changes, the dressing changes, the feeding is changing. My God, the involvement and interaction is changing. Let me tell you, even the language, the language you are used for Rodiba, it's not the language of State House or the White House. Those are two different environments. Hallelujah. You are dining at the king or at the table of the king continually. So even the manners. <laughs> So that is it. That is what God is doing. Because why? God has introduced, I mean, introduced us to a season that is going to glorify his name and the nations of the world will enjoy interacting with the sons of God. Even, that's why the Bible says even the creation, the birds of the air, the cats in your house, the dogs in your compound, the cows you are milking, they, are, they have been waiting for a manifestation. So now this is a time. Hallelujah. And God is manifesting us in his own glory. And Haggai is saying, the latter glory that shall be greater than the former in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's my prayer for each one of us this particular morning, whatever time it is in your continent. My God, hallelujah. Kindly be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. It is not business as, you, as usual. Allow me to say what the Spirit of God is telling me to say. You know, it is not business as usual. It is not just an interaction. It's not just a call. It's not just a fellowship. Anything God is, is allowing you as a son of God to be a part of, Kaitre, it must add something towards the destiny that God preordained for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Enjoy your Saturday. It's very early in the morning. Saturday morning, my continent. And whatever time it is in your, in your continent, in your country, may the Lord help you. May the Lord, uh, let me put myself in that basket. May, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. May the, I, I hear the Spirit of God say, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I have no time for ministration. Let me, let, let me, the Spirit of God help each one of us to fit in. I hear the Lord say, that is what, all what I'm looking for from my people. Fit in. 
I know the business idea I have for you. I know the destiny I have for you. That says the Lord. I know where I'm taking you. My goodness, hallelujah. I know of your past pains. And I know the relief I'm bringing your way. Hallelujah. The Lord knows what he's doing. That's why I read for you a scripture the other day. That God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. We cannot come afraid. We cannot cover up. We cannot pretend. He knows those who are his. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, we are going to enjoy our life in salvation. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reward that the Lord is about to bring you away in my way. Now, my God, it's going to be such an encouragement and you will know that your waiting on God was not in vain. My brethren, your waiting on God was not in vain. You are failing to compromise when everybody compromise. My goodness, my God, we, we, uh, we have stood for God. You know, it was not in vain. Hallelujah. May the Lord align you. May we, may we be aligned. May we fit in. Actually, that is all what is needed right now. The, the prompting of the Spirit of God in your life fit in. But in my eyes, it may seem shameful for you to shout and you are a man. Hey, this one, you are a man. Don't you know, Bartimaeus, you are a man. It's not, about the, the, it's not about the man here. It's about the season of God. So I'm fitting in. My God, hallelujah. My God. And I like the, 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 the way the woman with the issue of blood is doing it. She didn't want to be known. You know, actually, the Bible, I love the version of my Bible that says, and she said to herself, <laughs> another version of the land, she thought within herself, my God, hallelujah. If I can only get hold, this is very personal. So you enter into the season as a person. You fit in as an individual. Hallelujah. A whole rich man called Zacchaeus going up a sycamore tree with a suit and a tie. My God, and a, and a, and a, and a nice shoe. Hallelujah. It may look very shameful, but let me tell you, that is it. At the end of the day, he's enjoying what nobody else enjoys. So seizing the moment and fit in. Because why? These things are prompted of God because it is a season of God. They are being, I know, we are getting the rights of God. You know, they, they, are, they are being, um, you know, set up for us by God. They are being orchestrated by God. Hallelujah. Ours is just to say, here I am, Lord. May it be done unto me or may it be unto me according to your will. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom. we we'll see you tomorrow as we finish the last day. Tomorrow is the last day of March. Let's see what the Lord is up to. I'm telling you in the presence of God and hear what the Lord has for us. May the Lord bless us so much. Hydre, share the word of God. Let the church be an encourage. And when I encourage you, Hydre, and encourage others. And Jesus is telling Peter, I prayed for you. And when you have overcome, and encourage your brethren. So, kindly as I minister to you, share the word of God and encourage other brethren for the glory and honor of the name of the Lord. God bless you. Shalom.